His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who conveyed to His Majesty congratulations on McLaren's victory in the Formula One World Constructors Championship for the first time in 26 years and first place in the Etihad Airways Formula One Grand Prix of the Formula One World Championship. His Royal Highness affirmed that His Majesty's unlimited support and care for all sports sectors is the greatest motivation to exert more efforts and make achievements that add to Bahrain's record that is full of honorable successes in support of His Majesty's aspirations and visions towards consolidating the kingdom's position on the global sports map. He also said that the McLaren team's achievement, which raised the status of Bahrain, embodies the ambition of the Bahrain team and its keenness to draw success stories that everyone is proud of and a source of inspiration to continue achieving the development of the homeland and building the bright future that everyone aspires for. He wished His Majesty good health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the Union March in Al Wathba region of Abu Dhabi as part of the annual Sheikh Zayed Festival in celebration of the UAE's 53rd National Day. His Royal Highness conveyed the congratulations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on this occasion. He also offered his congratulations on this national occasion and emphasized the strength of the long standing. Bahrain UAE relations, which continue to be strengthened by His Majesty the King and His Highness the UAE President. He highlighted the significance of official visits between the leadership of both countries in enhancing bilateral relations. He also praised the events held at the Union March, which showcased the unity, culture and heritage of the UAE through various artistic and cultural performances. His Royal Highness extended his wishes for continued progress to the UAE and its citizens. The Union March is one of the main events of the Sheikh Zayed Festival held annually during the UAE's National Day celebrations, featuring cultural performances on the main stage at Al Wathba Square. The event featured representatives from tribes across the Emirates who performed traditional songs. His Royal Highness was accompanied by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance, National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and senior officials.
A phone call was held between His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Prime Minister of the UK, the Right Honourable Sir Keir Starmer. His Royal Highness and the UK Prime Minister discussed the UK's decision to join the Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement, CSIPA, which seeks the, to strengthen cooperation among like-minded countries to promote stability and progress. He said that such agreements serve as a foundation for a prosperous future and economic growth that benefits all. The UK Prime Minister emphasised that the CCPA agreement reflects both kingdoms' shared commitment to safeguarding security and peace. The two sides then discussed ways to strengthen the Bahrain-UK partnership and enhance multi-sectoral collaboration, particularly in defence. In addition, the long-standing Bahrain-UK relations, rooted in a shared history of cooperation and multi-sectoral collaboration, were also discussed. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the Formula One Etihad Airways Abu Dhabi Grand Prix 24 qualifying sessions in the UAE. His Royal Highness said that the capabilities and expertise of regional countries have contributed to their success in hosting Formula One races and strengthened their competitiveness in organizing international motorsports events. His Royal Highness met with senior officials, team managers, F1 drivers and organizers at the circuit. He praised the UAE's efforts in elevating the prestige of the Formula One and extended his wishes for continued progress and prosperity to the UAE and its people and expressed hope for the organizers of the Yas Marina Circuit Formula One races to also achieve great successes. His Royal Highness highlighted the enduring Bahrain-UAE relations strengthened by shared bonds and multi-sectoral collaboration. He noted the mutual commitment to advancing cooperation to achieve shared aspirations and benefit both nations and peoples. His Royal Highness was accompanied by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance, National Economy, His Excellency Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and senior officials. The Kingdom of Bahrain, led by His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, continues to establish its position in the world of motorsport through the McLaren Company of Bahrain Holding Properties. Bahrain and the McLaren team gathered a common vision based on innovation and higher performance and a commitment to developing motorsports globally. On the land of the Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi, the passion for the fierce competition was met in the Formula One Etihad Airways for the Formula One Championship after the McLaren team was able to extract the title of the championship and write a new chapter in the history of the team to put the name of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the highest ranks in sports forums on the global level. The Commander of the National Guard, General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received the Chief of the General Staff of the Pakistan Army, Lieutenant General Mohammed Owais, and his delegation. His Highness praised the growth of bilateral relations, particularly in expertise exchange and joint exercises between the National Guard and the Pakistani Army. Lieutenant General Owais thanked His Highness for his keenness to advance the bilateral cooperation, which affirms the strong brotherly relations between the two countries. The two sides also discussed topics of common interests.
As the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the U.S. Deputy National Security Advisor for Cybersecurity, Anne Neuberger, on the sidelines of the Manama Dialogue 24. The meeting was attended by the Minister of Finance, National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. His Highness praised the historic and strategic partnership between Bahrain and the U.S., which is founded on decades of trust, collaboration and coordination, particularly in defense and advanced technology. He highlighted the Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement signed in 23 as a cornerstone of the bilateral relations, enhancing cooperation and advancing shared goals on peace and stability. The meeting discussed ways to advance cooperation across various fields and reviewed key regional and international developments. Well, first of all, uh, Deputy National Security Advisor um, Anne Neuberger, the United States delegation, welcome to Bahrain. Um, we really appreciate you visiting our country, but also visiting our country uh, dynamically with big announcements. Um, and especially, um, we have signed, uh, after us signing the SESIPA over a year ago, uh, we see how um, um, we've been achieving things uh, quite in a fast manner. Um, we, we expect to see the United Kingdom to sign and join the SESIPA with us today. Um, this is a significant um, accord that we have uh, worked on and um, um, I hope that uh, together with our rich history that uh, we have gone through, um, we see a brighter future as well. Um, so in this spirit as well, I would like to uh, uh, let you uh, and to have a few words if you, if you allow us. Absolutely. So first, thank you very much for the warm welcome to Bahrain. Bahrain is the US's trusted partner in the region, an innovative partner, one in which we have not only a long history, but an innovative history, work together from national security to commercial interests to technology, that was very much captured in the SESIPA agreement that Secretary of State Bill Lincoln had signed with His Royal Highness the Crown Prince a year ago. And it is exciting to be back here in Bahrain, both to broaden the agreement with the invitation to the UK, the documents which will be signed, as well as the announcement we will make together to deepen the partnership as well. So it is wonderful to be here to talk about the next phase in deepening our partnership under the SESIPA technology track. As I mentioned, SESIPA reflects our close security relationship with Bahrain, which is home to the U.S. Navy's Fifth Fleet, as well as the multilateral combined maritime forces, which includes 46 partner nations. SESIPA also includes pillars on trade and investment, and emerging technology because we cannot build peace and prosperity without including the modern innovations as well as the technological advancements that most benefit our people commercially and our people's security. So today we are announcing furthering that vision. Under the auspices of SESIPA's technology pillar, I am proud to announce a new effort called the Geospatial Acceleration Initiative with Bahrain. Through this initiative, the U.S. National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, which is a world leader in geospatial intelligence, will collaborate with Bahraini stakeholders to produce and share hydrographic, aeronautical, and topographic geofoundational, geospatial foundation data to enhance navigation safety and bolster maritime security. This cooperation aligns with our joint efforts to counter threats to maritime domains and trade and uphold international law. And we are launching the Geospatial Acceleration Initiative with our Bahraini partners in recognition of our long and close partnership and shared commitments to confront today's challenges with ingenuity and cooperation. 
This is but one of many technological initiatives we're developing with Bahrain under SISIPA in areas like telecom, artificial intelligence, and space cooperation. And as we grow our mutual collaboration, much as the announcement made last night, we also look to expanding the number of countries that participate in those efforts as well towards our mutual goals of prosperity and peace. Thank you. And it is wonderful to be here to share this with you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Thank you. as well. Bahrain and the U.S. unveil the Geospatial Acceleration Initiative. That's an ambitious step forward in one of the Middle East's longest standing and most valued strategic partnerships. This initiative stems from the advanced technology track of the Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement signed in 23, which strengthened Bahrain-U.S. collaboration in defense, security, and cutting-edge technology development. Bahrain's steadfast dedication to regional security is exemplified by its prominent role in supporting multinational efforts to ensure safe navigation in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, countering threats to maritime trade and upholding international law. Bahrain's leadership in this effort underscores its ongoing commitment to advancing regional stability and protecting vital global trade corridors. Throughout the Geospatial Acceleration Initiative and the Advanced CCPA Tech Track, the U.S. National Geospatial Intelligence Agency will collaborate with Bahraini stakeholders to produce and share hydrographic, aeronautical, and topographic geospatial foundation data. This partnership will enhance navigation safety for both military forces and bolster maritime security across the region. The enduring Bahrain-U.S. partnership, rooted in decades of mutual trust and shared goals, is a testament to the power of collaboration. Through the initiative, the resolve to resolve confront challenges with unity will be reaffirmed. This partnership continues to serve as a cornerstone of peace, security and prosperity for both nations and beyond. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, chaired the weekly meeting in which the chairman praised the great international achievement of the council in achieving the first place in the Arab world and the 13th globally in the Digital Maturity Index of parliaments out of 115 parliaments and legislative council in 86 countries. The council then approved a draft law on Bahrain's accession to the 1949 Convention on Red Road Traffic and another draft law or regarding organizing time sharing in accommodation units. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, received the heads of parliamentary delegations attending the Asian Parliamentary Assembly, Assembly Standing Committee on Economy and Sustainable Development. The chairman affirmed Bahrain's commitment to supporting legislative and parliamentary efforts to develop joint visions that enhance stability and drive sustainable development. He highlighted the strong collaboration between Bahrain's legislative authority and global parliaments, aligning with His Majesty the King's vision on fostering international partnership to achieve shared goals. Al Saleh emphasized Bahrain's dedication to building relations founded on mutual respect and non-interference in internal affairs. He credited the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister for Bahrain's progress in strengthening global partnership and promoting sustainable growth. He noted the significance of the committee's meetings in advancing sustainable development, particularly in economic and development fields, which are critical to national successes. Al Saleh underscored the role of these gatherings in providing a platform for Asian parliaments to exchange views. The chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, chaired the council's regular session. The council extended its congratulations to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister on the occasion of Bahrain's national holidays. It praised Bahrain's steady growth and development as well as its successive achievements and gains thanks to His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness and the determination and loyalty of the people of Bahrain. On the occasion of commemoration Day, the Council recalled with appreciation the sincere role and sacrifices of Bahrain's martyrs for the sake of the country's security, prosperity and stability. 
The Council then welcomed the results of the meeting of the 45th session of the GCC Summit in Kuwait, which resulted in constructive outcomes in order to enhance the process of cooperation and effective Gulf achievements. The Council also expressed its deep pride in the appreciation and praise expressed by their Majesties and Highnesses at this meeting for His Majesty's initiative to host the Islamic, Islamic Dialogue Conference in Manama next February. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended the ceremony held by the General Directorate of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing on the occasion of the graduation of the second, third and fourth batches of beneficiaries of the Open Prisons Programme, where the electronic system of the General Directorate was launched in presence of ministers, senior officials and ambassadors from brotherly and friendly countries. The minister stressed that the royal visions of His Majesty the King constitute the foundation from which the Alternative Sentences Project was launched, which constitutes a civilizational leap in the march of human rights in Bahrain. He said that His Majesty's directives to expand the application of the law are a guarantee and support for the continuation of the project and the achievement of the desired humanitarian and societal goals. He praised the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister, for all humanitarian programs and initiatives. The ministers thanked government agencies, institutions and national companies for their role in supporting the rehabilitation and training programs for the beneficiaries of the Open Prisons program. He noted the development, modernization and launching of new initiatives that contribute to furthering achievements which reflect the dedication, sincerity and professional performance of the General Directorate and those in charge of the program. Then the Director General of uh, Verdict <laughs> Enforcement <laughs> and Alternative <laughs> Sentencing, Sheikh Khalid bin Rashid Al Khalifa, delivered a speech on this occasion, expressing deepest thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for his great interest in the National Alternative Sentences Project and in receiving and honoring Bahraini cadres from the General Directorate. He said that His Majesty's vision laid the foundations of the Distinguished National Reform Project and the comprehensive development process with the highest principles and noble national values that consolidated this national project. He also expressed sincere thanks to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister, for his unlimited support and keenness to provide exemplary opportunities that contribute to the reintegration of beneficiaries into society and encourage them to look forward to their bright future. He pointed out the successes achieved by Bahrain in achieving the best international practices in the field of human rights through the alternative sentences system and the open prisons program, stressing that Bahrain is becoming a leading and inspiring model in the field of human rights in line with the royal directives. He said that coinciding the silver jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne, Bahrain is moving forward in its civilizational march in making many achievements in line with the visions of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister. He said that these achievements are also thanks to the support and cooperation with various government and private entities in accordance with the goals of the initiatives led by the Ministry of Interior. He concluded by saying that the national system of alternative sentences achieved a result of 97.5% as more than 7,600 beneficiaries were rehabilitated and reintegrated, adding that more than 7,600 families have benefited from this initiative. And for their part, the beneficiaries thanked His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness, as well as the Minister of Interior and the Director General, for the great success achieved by the Alternative Sentences System, which constitutes a qualitative, civilized and humanitarian achievement for Bahrain. The ceremony included a short documentary film on the civilized project of alternative penalties and the Open Prisons Programme. ونهنئهم على نجاحهم المشهود 
في ترجمة الأثر الإنساني والاجتماعي المرجو من البرنامج والمتمثل في من المستفيدين من أملا جديدا لاستعادة ذاتهم وللاندماج في مجتمعهم وللحفاظ على استقرار أسرهم وهذا أمر نحرص عليه ونوجه لتطوير مجالاته وتنويع فرص الاستفادة منه بوركت جهودكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Minister of Interior then honored a number of supporters, success partners, distinguished beneficiaries of the program, winning projects, and the best trainer, in addition to honoring the guest of honor, the Assistant Secretary General for Security Affairs of the GCC. The minister then toured the exhibition of the beneficiaries' projects, which reflect their abilities and creativity and their benefit from the lectures and qualification programs that were provided to them over the course of a full year of preparation and training. Among among these projects are the one of using a wind turbine on public streets to obtain an additional source of clean and renewable energy and to produce electrical energy from car traffic, as well as the project of a device to convert plastic waste into new products or reused raw materials, while another project details the provision of a mobile truck equipped to recycle agricultural waste into easy-to-use compressed wood, and another one aims to solve the issues of construction contractors and steel services where iron reinforcement fiberglass is used as an alternative to wood, leading to saving time and efforts. These projects were designed by the beneficiaries in the dedicated workshop at the Open Prisons Complex. Today, the Minister of Interior graduating three batches of uh, Open Prison Program, and uh, those beneficiaries are well rehabilitated and uh, educated to integrate within the community. We have mixed feeling. Part of us is very happy to see them uh, reaching to this level of success and confidence, and the other part of us are sad that uh, they are leaving us today. But of course, the Alternative Sanctions Directorate will still be in contact with them uh, through the subsequent follow-up division within the Alternative Sanctions Directorate. And uh, we'll make sure that they are very stable in the community. Today, I would like to thank all institutes and colleges that participated within uh, the Alternative Sanctions. And uh, they did a lot. Uh, for us and for those those beneficiaries and they are one of the main reasons that helps tho help, help those beneficiaries to integrate into the community very grateful to be part of this great thing that I we're doing uh, the self-development courses that we give them and it's a very self-satisfying job and seeing them grow and uh, develop in their life it's something great and I would like to thank the management and everyone who participated in making this program. Today I'm one of the beneficiaries after the program of the Open Prison. I just reassure you that in this program we have been reassured and get confidence, self-confidence. We have to merge back into the future, uh, back to the, uh, merge back into the society, okay, which is something, it's a unique and remarkable, the way we have been treated, the education that we have got and we have been held into lots of programs and educated with a different different uh, professional peoples the interior minister general sheikh rashid bin abdullah al khalifa and the executive vice president of global business airbus helicopters olivier michelon signed a purchase contract for helicopters with multi-technical and technological roles in police aviation with its advanced capabilities in public safety emergency medical services and law enforcement the interior minister thanked his majesty the king for his royal directives that contributed to improving police performance competency and reinforcing the security development 
development and modernization journey. He valued the support and care of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister to develop security performance and tackle security challenges with the required competency and readiness. He stressed the support and assistance these technologies provide to police aviation and the enhancement of its role in maintaining security, public safety and air ambulance. He noted that developing police aviation's efficiency constitutes an important aspect of security performance. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdelatif Ben Rashid Al Zayani, met with a delegation from the British Parliament on the occasion of their visit to Bahrain to participate in the Manama Dialogue 24. They discussed the close historical relations which are, which are witnessing tangible growth within the framework of the two countries' keenness to enhance them in order to serve the interest of the two friendly countries and their peoples. They also discussed the latest developments in the region and their implications on regional security and stability. The meeting was attended by Bahrain's ambassador to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and the head of the Al Madar Center at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ali Khalid Al Arifi. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Ben Rashid Al Zayani, met with the Permanent Secretary of Cyprus Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Andreas Kakouris, on the occasion of his visit to Bahrain to participate in the Manama Dialogue. They discussed the friendship relation between both countries, which are witnessing growth in light of the mutual keenness to enhance cooperation and push them towards more comprehensive levels in order to serve common interests. They also exchanged views on various regional issues, current developments, and efforts aimed at establishing peace and stability in the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani, met with the EU Special Representative for the Gulf region, Luigi Di Maio, during his visit to Bahrain to participate in the Manama Dialogue Forum 24. The meeting reviewed the close relations between Bahrain and the EU, means to enhance bilateral cooperation to serve common interests and regional and international issues, as well as international efforts aimed at resolving conflicts and promoting peace, security and stability in the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani, met with EU Special Representative for the Middle East, Sven Koopmans, during his visit to Bahrain to participate in the Manama Dialogue Forum 24. During this meeting, they discussed cooperation between Bahrain and the EU and means to develop them, reviewing the latest developments in the Middle East and their implications for regional security and stability, emphasizing the need to enhance cooperation to reduce tensions and escalation and to achieve peace in the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani, met with members of the American Israel Public Affairs Committee on the occasion of their visit to Bahrain to participate in the Manama Dialogue 24. The meeting discussed the historical relations and strategic partnership between Bahrain and the U.S. and ways to enhance cooperation between the two sides in all that would consolidate and spread the values of peace and coexistence in addition to the latest regional and international developments. The meeting was attended by the Director General of Bilateral Relations at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Sheikh Abdullah bin Ali Al Khalifa, Bahrain's Ambassador to Israel, Khaled Yusuf Al Jalahma, the head of the ministry's Al Madar Center, Ali Khaled Al Arifi, and the head of the America's sector at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Salman Hassan Al Jalahma. India's Minister of External Affairs, Dr. Subra Maniam J. Shankar, arrived in Bahrain to participate in the meeting of the Bahrain-India Joint Supreme Committee. Upon arrival at Bahrain International Airport, he was received by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Bin Rashid Al Zayani. The Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wael Mubarak, inaugurated the 12th edition of the Bahrain Farmers Market at El Badea's Botanical Garden. He said that the launch is a testament to the great interest that Bahrain attaches to providing support to the agricultural sector. The Minister of Tourism, Fatma Al Serafi, stressed that this edition of the Farmers Market is one of the main and important events that highlight local Bahraini products and promote Bahrain on the regional and international tourism map.
The Secretary General of the National Initiative for Agricultural Development, Sheikha Maram ben Taisa Al Khalifa, said that the initiative always seeks to support farmers, especially in terms of providing outlets to market their products, as the farmer's market is an important platform through which Bahraini farmers have been able to build a wide customer base promoting many of them to diversify their products and add new varieties of locally demanded products. The opening of the market witnessed a wide turnout of citizens, residents and visitors from inside and outside the kingdom. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirmed that Bahrain is closely following the rapid developments in Syria in the context of its concern for Syria's security and stability, the preservation of its sovereignty, unity and territorial integrity and the protection of civilians in accordance with international humanitarian law. The Ministry urged all parties of the Syrian people to prioritize the supreme interests of the nation and its citizens and preserve the state's public institutions and the safety of its vital and economic facilities. It affirmed the Bahrain's support for regional and international efforts to support the brotherly Syrian people and their aspirations to build a bright future where security, stability, unity and justice prevail and to facilitate the return of refugees and displaced persons to their homes as part of a reconstruction plan, building democratic institutions, achieving peace and stability and restoring the state's vital role in its Arab and international surroundings. The Manama Dialogue 24 concluded its work after holding several sessions that discussed the most pressing challenges in foreign policy, defense and security in the Middle East. The fifth session addressed the interplay between global security and Middle East security. The sixth addressed defense challenges in a complex world. And the final session explored where is regional strategic cooperation headed. The Manama Dialogue, which has been held annually since 2004, is a key element of the security architecture in the Middle East, bringing together ministers, policy makers and decision makers to discuss regional security. So I'm very happy to be here at the 20th version of the IISS Manama Dialogue. Uh, this has been a very, very productive session so far. Uh, I really want to commend IISS for their flawless uh, organization. Importantly, though, I also really want to acknowledge uh, the vision of the government of Bahrain in uh, committing to holding this very important forum on a regular basis every year. This kind of a forum allows American officials to meet with their counterparts from around the Middle East region and from around the world to discuss the important uh, difficult issues that confront us these days. Um, it's a very important uh, conference and we are very glad to be here and we're grateful to the Kingdom of Bahrain. Well, I think that this conference is really important for the uh, having a, a broad discussion on several security issues in the Middle East. And it's highly important that this is done in Bahrain because of the capacity of Bahrain to have all these leaderships from the region and from across also uh, the rest parts of the world uh, meeting here and gathering here to be able to have uh, this discussion in a very open forum that is provided by, by Bahrain. I would like to thank Bahrain for uh, this opportunity and uh, this is giving us a huge opportunity to meet with uh, people that are uh, very important for the maritime security. In the presence of the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Labour, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the Fourth Gulf Forum of Labour Federations and Committees, hosted by the Free Trade Union Federation of Bahrain, kicked off in Bahrain. We have more in this report. In order to coordinate the positions of Gulf Labour Unions and Committees in regional and international participations, the fourth Gulf Forum of Labor Unions and Committees in the GCC countries was launched to discuss all strategic ways to ensure the rights of Gulf workers, in addition to reviewing the experiences of each country in this field. In its fourth edition, this forum has become a unified platform for consultation and exchange of visions in various labor affairs, contributing to the development of labor legislation, 
including social protection systems, intensifying efforts to enhance the participation of women in development, and integrating them in various productive sectors, in addition to upgrading the training and vocational qualification system and consolidating the principles of occupational health and safety. On its second day, the participants will continue to follow up on the formation of the working groups of the Coordinating Council of Gulf Labor Federations and Committees, in addition to setting a date for the meetings of the Coordinating Council of Gulf International Labor Federations and Committees. Representatives of the Gulf Parliamentary Councils called for continuing to strengthen joint Gulf Parliamentary action and unifying positions on issues of common interest, while reaffirmed the unified Gulf position on regional and international issues. This came during the GCC coordination meeting held ahead of the meeting of the Economic Affairs and Sustainable Development Committee of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly, hosted by Bahrain from December 8th to 9th, in which the delegation of the Parliamentary Division of Bahrain participated, headed by Chairman of the Council's Finance and Economic Affairs Committee, head of the delegation and Vice President of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly, Ahmed Al Saloum. The meeting discussed unifying common visions and converging Gulf parliamentary views on seven projects included in the meeting's agenda of the APA's Committee on Economic Affairs and Sustainable Development. The meeting aims to activate Gulf parliamentary diplomacy, exchange Gulf expertise and experiences, discuss common Gulf issues and support continuous coordination and cooperation between Gulf parliaments within the corridors of the APA.